Alrighty. Well, hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium here live on Facebook. Hello to everyone watching us here on the replay. Hello to everyone joining us live right now on the stream. My name's Patrick. I work at the aquarium here in social media, and we are live right now at Lover's Point Beach here in Pacific Grove, where we are taking a look at a pretty cool event here where we have all of these pelagic red crabs washing up here on the beach. Now, what we have right here is a typical occurrence of a stranding of these pelagic red crabs, also known as tuna crabs, also known as lobster krill. Um, and these are a species of squat lobster known as Pleuron Cody's planipus, actually described out here in the Monterey Bay in the 1850s during a likely El Nino. And uh, this particular species is more of a southern species of crab that you usually find off of Southern California and on into Baja and in Mexico. But they do make their way up into the Monterey Bay during El Nino conditions. Now, NOAA has us pegged at about an 80% chance of an El Nino this year. And if there is any indication of that being more and more likely, well, we have right here the stranding of these pelagic red crabs here washed up here along the beach. Now, no one's entirely sure why these strandings occur, except that they do all the time, especially down in Baja and off of Southern California. And here in the Monterey Bay, we usually see these strandings when there's an El Nino, when there are warmer conditions out there, where basically the floodgates open up from Point Conception by Santa Barbara, the floodgates open up, making it possible for southern species to migrate further north or for their larvae to survive going further north. And this, what we see right here, is something that has occurred numerous times in the Monterey Bay, famously in 1982, 1983, during a massive El Nino, where the red crabs were so thick and abundant that the gulls ate so many, they were having a hard time flying away. And then we had pelagic red crabs in 2015 and 2016, which you might recall from our social media. And that was a harbinger of that massive El Nino that we had there during that winter. And uh, again, we had about an 80% chance that there would be a El Nino this year. And here they are again, these pelagic red crabs. And we saw them a few months ago here in the bay, but no big strandings. Uh, but here they are, we made it. Uh, now, for those of you who are remarking that, yeah, they do look a lot like uh, lobster, like crawdads, these are a squat lobster. They are in the crustacean family, but uh, very importantly, they basically look like a crab with this very, very short tail back there that they tuck in underneath their body. So they look a lot like a lobster, look a lot like a crab. They're right there in between. They are a squat lobster. And... Uh, these animals, you usually find them on the deep sea floor, hence those big black eyes there, very light sensitive. They're usually walking around and feeding on carrion, but they sometimes go up into the water column, and uh, that's usually where we see a lot of them. Now, they're known as tuna crabs because tuna love to eat them. And then we also know that blue whales off of Baja love to feed on these things. And seagulls, we've got loads of seagulls. We actually scared a lot of the seagulls away, but. There are gulls all along in there that have just been feasting on these all morning. And these pelagic red crabs, again, tuna crabs, lobster krill, uh, they are food for many organisms out there in the Monterey Bay when they're around. Uh, some studies suggest that they might not be as energetically important uh, for, for different species as, say, krill or other animals are. So uh, these might be more of a popcorn-type meal than... Uh, than uh, broccoli or something else for uh, maybe healthier, higher in nutrition. So these animals here do become food, but they might supplant different food uh, opportunities out there for animals. So they might have an ecological impact in that area too. Um, are they still alive? Some of them are. They're not gonna be alive for very much longer. If you put them back in the water, they won't likely be okay because the tide will just push them right back onto the beach. And uh, they likely are washing up because they're cold shocks. It's just a little bit too cold for them when they uh, show up here. Uh, no reason to be sad, this is just part of that circle of life there. These pelagic red crabs, once the tide comes back in, will all wash back out and become food for anemones and crabs and fish and loads of other animals out there. 
They can be good to eat. I would not recommend anyone out there collect any of them out here, even though you could with your fishing permit. Uh, these animals don't have a whole lot of food to them. But uh, yeah, again, this is one of those oceanographic events that happens out here in the Monterey Bay pretty frequently. There's lots of stuff happening. I mean, the bay is alive and constantly changing. There's always new things. Uh, we've got all these gulls that are hanging out out there, loving the feast off of these uh, red crabs. But if you go on the well watch boats, you might see orcas that are out there currently hunting different, uh, different marine mammals out there. So uh, always something new here in the Monterey Bay, but this is very similar to what happened in 2015 and 2016 during that winter El Nino. And so here they are washing up kind of right there on cue, that classic tale of potential El Nino conditions out there in the Monterey Bay. Uh, with a permission permit, with a fishing permit, you could uh, collect them. Sorry about uh, if I misspoke there. With the fishing permit, you could collect these. They're uh, regulated uh, same as other invertebrates. Make sure to check what those current regulations are for those of you folks out there that are interested. But yeah, so here are just, there's a classic example of uh, a biological indicator of larger climactic conditions. Uh, lots of animals respond to the weather, to the climate, and uh, these animals in particular are definitely going to be there when the waters are warmer here in the Monterey Bay or when there's more El Nino conditions. And uh, don't worry everyone, for every one you see here on the beach, there are millions more out there in the wild, so nothing to be overly concerned about. Uh, the smell will be intense later, yep, that's a pretty pretty likely indicator too. And for those of you folks who are out there taking a look at these uh, at these crabs, if you're ever out here visiting the Monterey Bay, you can get a good sign that there are pelagic red crabs about. If you see pink poop on the ground from the seagulls munching on them, that's another telltale sign of these pelagic red crabs. We also call them bloop crabs in case, uh, in case you've been following us for a while because they bloop about in the water. But uh, yeah, if uh, we were wondering if the El Nino was going to happen, well, this seems to be a good indicator, at least, that uh, the ocean is responding in that regard. But with that, everyone, thank you so much for following us here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium here live on Facebook, bringing you some news here from the Monterey Bay. Pelagic red crabs are here. The tuna crabs are back, which means El Nino seems more and more likely out here and certainly very well-fed seagulls along the coast and uh, just one of those signs that uh, the ocean is constantly adapting and changing with its biology to what's going on out there and uh, going to the beach is a good indication to find out what is happening a little bit further offshore. So with that everyone, thank you so much for following us here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium on Facebook. I'm going to sign off right now. I'm going to head over to YouTube. But thank you so much for following us everyone and we will see you again soon at the Monterey Bay Aquarium and we'll certainly update you if anything else happens here with these red crabs. Thanks everyone. Talk soon.